Hey everybody, it's Jeremy Osterberger at BIC Magazine. We're out at the Exxon Mobil Baytown Complex for the startup of the new advanced recycling facility here in Baytown. I've got Dr. Dave Andrew with me. Dr. Dave Andrew is Vice President, New Market De Development for Exxon Mobil. Dave, great to see you. Great to see you too. So Dave, we spoke, oh, about a year or so ago and you had the pilot plan up and running. Tell us about today, what it means for you and what does it mean for Exxon? Well, this is a pretty exciting day, Jeremy. This is, um, this is one of the largest advanced recycling facilities in North America. It's, um, it's a facility that's taking difficult to recycle plastics, you know, plastics that would other end, end up in a landfill or incineration, and we're putting them into this unit, producing high quality raw materials that can then be used to make new plastic products. Um, this facility that you see behind me here has got a capacity of 80 million pounds of plastic that would have all otherwise gone to landfill. We're taking it into this unit. Put that in perspective. That's like recycling 400 Olympic-sized pools full of plastic bags every year. Dave, dig into the technology a little bit. For the most part, it's pyrolysis. But what makes this site unique? So what we're using here is um, we're integrating it into this massive complex here at Baytown. And we're leveraging all the capability that that complex has. So that allows us to be efficient, allows us to, to lower our costs because we're using a lot of the processing equipment that we already have. What we put on the front end here is a really special unit that gets solid plastic waste and all kinds of different varieties into a unit so then we can process it into a raw material that other units can use. That gives us a lot of flexibility. It's allowed us to go pretty quickly. So last time I talked to you, we were talking about you know, a smaller unit that was a capacity of about 15 million pounds. Now we're up to 80. And Jeremy, we're not stopping there. We want to hit a billion pounds of capacity around the world by 2026. So Dave, you talked about the variety of what goes into this site. Dig into that a little bit more. What is the feedstock? Give our audience a little bit more depth into, into so what you're using to run this, this, this facility. Yeah, so like I said, we're using difficult to recycle plastic. So think about um, you know, the artificial turf that goes onto a sports field that your kids play soccer on, or chip bags that have um, that aluminum foil on the inside. Uh, think about pet food bags that are flexible. Um, think about bubble wrap that you get in your Amazon box. Um, think about motor oil bottles that have some contamination on. All of these things are difficult to recycle. So we can, instead of sending them to landfill, we can bring them here and break them into new, brand new products. So Dave, the output is a high performance circular polymer. High performance circular polymer that actually has exactly the same properties that our current polymers. So this is one of the beauties of this process. We can take plastic waste in and we convert it into materials um, with the same quality that you have today. And, and, and Dave, stepping back, I mean, why are certain plastics just so hard to recycle mechanically? Well, a lot of the, uh, the plastic films that you see today have different types of plastic in that film. So take, for example, that uh, chip, potato chip bag. It's got an aluminum film on there. That aluminum film is quite important because it stops the potato chips from going rancid. It keeps the oxygen out. But because it's got aluminum plastic together, it's kind of hard to recycle it. So what we can do here is we can put it in and we can break that down chemically and then convert it into raw materials it can use. So you're really producing a, a circular economy by you know, converting materials into raw materials that can then be used into new products. Gotcha. So Dave, uh, total timeline kind of from engineering to groundbreaking to where we are today, what was that, a couple of years? What was the timeline? Uh, it's about 18 months, actually. Okay. If you go from engineering up to today, when we're starting it up and we're doing a full capacity run, um, of course, there's some business planning on the front end of that. But, um, you know, our, our integration and being able to do it here in a big complex has really allowed us to go faster. Dave, it takes a village to pull this off. Talk about some of the stakeholders from the city of Houston, other stakeholders, some of your technology partners. Talk a little bit about that and uh, the other stakeholders that it took to pull this off. Well, we've had a fantastic collaboration with the city of Houston. Um, you know, we, one of the, uh, the challenges that we have with this type of process is just getting access to the feedstock. And so we've been working with the city to help expand um, recycling programs for the, uh, for the community. And we want to do more on that side. In fact, just this last weekend, we were up in Kingwood 
uh, with a new program so that uh, we can collect more plastic from that community. We hope to deploy that in other communities as we go forward. Um, we're working across the value chain with our customers um, and their customers, the major brands. You know, our customers are just calling out for more recycled content. And so we're trying to meet that demand as they make their commitments and they grow. You know, and the, the brands that you see on the shelves of the grocery stores, they want to have more recycled content. So our goal is to, to build more of these complexes, scale them up, but that means we need access to the materials from the community. And so working from community to the technology, all the way through to our customers and the brands, we've got, that's our way that we're collaborating to make this circular economy work. And so Dave, you mentioned that the demand for uh, these types of uh, high performance circular polymers is higher than the supply. And so you mentioned Exxon is evaluating more advanced recycling facilities. Can you speak on that a little more? Yeah, more than happy to. So our, our goal is to deploy one billion pounds of capacity by the end of 26. And so what that means is we're deploying similar facilities to this in other locations across the Gulf Coast. Okay. So Baton Rouge, Louisiana, we're going to Beaumont. Uh, we're also looking at a um, facility up in uh, Illinois, in Joliet, in Canada, in, um, in Sarnia, Ontario. And we're also looking at similar facilities in Europe in the Netherlands, Belgium, and we've also got some interesting collaborations in Asia as well, in Indonesia and uh, Malaysia. So um, we're, we're going big, sure. we're going global, but it's all starting here in Houston. Sure. So, so Dave, one last question. You know, we've seen, we've seen CP Kim commit to some of the advanced recycling investments, Lyondell. You know, where, where as an industry do you expect to see advanced recycling and what's going on here? Where, where are we going to be 10, 15, 20 years? Give me a little crystal ball. I think in 10 to 15 years from now, you know, we'll have a very well established advanced recycling um, industry. And we certainly hope that, um, you know, our competitors across, uh, across the chemical industry deploy similar technologies. Uh, we think ours is a little bit better and we're going fast, so we're glad about that. But this is, this is an industry issue and we, we want more of these types of technologies deployed. It's going to be critical to really accelerating the progress of the circular economy. Without technologies like this, we can't have safe medical application plastics that are recycled. We can't have safe food contact applications. All of those difficult to recycle plastics, we need technology like this. So we are really comfortable with, with going fast on this. This is, a, this is a technology that we're familiar with. Now we need to get the value chain together. And that, and that means a collaboration with governments, communities, governments at the national, state, and local level. We need good policy to support that. And so we're really working hard with our partners and the whole industry to make this happen. Well, uh, Dr. Dave Andrew, thank you so much for your time. I always enjoy hanging out. And uh, please keep us in the mind of the future. If you ever want to come back on with Bic Magazine, you're more than welcome. Thank you so much. It's great to talk to you. Great.